three people have been arrested in connection with a planned attack on uh, attack to destabilize the country. A statement issued and signed by the information minister, uh, Kojo Pongkroma, named the suspects as Dr. Frederick Yao Mac, uh, Palm of the Citadel Hospital at uh, Alajo in Accra, Kafui Ezo, a local weapon manufacturer, and Bright Allen Deborah Fusu, who is also known as Bibi. The Joint Security Operations on Friday, September 20, according to the Information Minister Kojo Ponkroma, retrieved ammunition and explosive devices targeted at the presidency after a soup at separate locations. He listed five locally manufactured pistols with magazines fitted on them, one foreign pistol with registration number PX154006 and two magazines, three locally manufactured pistol barrels, three smoke grenades. 22 improvised explosive devices, 9 7.62 mm NATO AK-47, two AK-47 magazines and one long knife retrieved from the Citadel Hospital at Alajo in Accra. 63 9mm NATO rounds were retrieved at violation near Dodowa by the team. The arrest and seizure is after 15 months of surveillance and intelligence gathering on the prime suspects and others. All the exhibits are currently in the custody of the BNI, whilst investigations are being carried out for further action. Meanwhile, the suspects are undergoing interrogation. Meanwhile, Information Minister Kujo Pongkroma has confirmed that some of the soldiers uh, have been picked up in relation to the failed coup plot. Although uh, he was unable to give the specific number of compromised police officers uh, soldiers uh, in the arrest, he has said that the government will continue to investigate and further arrests are expected. Great. Now, I mean, looking at the statement, you talk about the fact that, that uh, he's been, they tried, I mean, uh, they engaged some soldiers. Should we expect more arrests? What about those soldiers? The updated brief I have this morning is that some soldiers are in custody and are being interrogated in connection with this enterprise as well. How many soldiers? I don't have a number to put out now, but the updated brief I have is that some soldiers have been um, picked up, are in custody, and are being interrogated uh, in connection with this enterprise. And when they are done uh, with them, those that they want to hold as being connected to this, they will let us know. So that's Kojo Pongkroma, his information minister, speaking earlier to Winston Amwa on uh, 3FM, the Sunrise, uh, which is a morning show on 3FM. All right, so still on this subject, though, the Bureau of Public Safety has commended state security agencies for surveilling, retrieving arms and ammunition, as well as arresting some suspected culprits behind the manufacture and stacking of arms in the country. The Bureau, in a press release, however, rejected government's communication on a foiled attempt to destabilize the country. According to the Bureau of, um, of Public Safety, government's communication is poor and does not assure public safety as more questions remain unanswered. All right, so let's go to the phone lines now and speak to um, the a former chief of defense staff and former national security advisor, um, Brigadier General Nuno Mensa, on this particular subject matter. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. With uh, previous knowledge in, you know, security monitoring and uh, as an advisor to uh, a government sometime past, are you surprised about this intelligence that has been gov uh, gathered by government and put out that a coup was being plotted? Well, th thank you very much. I'm actually surprised that anybody who be thinking of a coup at this time of our national development, you know, I thought we have gone beyond this point of having coup d'etat. I mean, from 1956, all through those years, until June 4th, the end of the first I thought that was the end of coup d'etat, because who decides are you going to solve our problem? We have many problems, but you can't solve them just by removing government violently. Mm. You know, there are better ways of doing it. You might think that the constitution we have, the poor republican constitution, is not delivering. But what is the other way to change government peacefully? There's no other way. 
Mm. If anybody has any any contrary view as how the government is performing, there's a route you can go, the constitutional way, you know. But to take up arms against the government, to me, is not the way the way forward. But with the statement that we have seen, and I'm sure you've also seen similar statements, um, while you were in government some time back and with your security uh, background, you must have been gathering information and tailing people and picking uh, intelligence. Did any of yes. them suggest there's a coup or you think from what we've gathered now, government is blowing this out of proportion, making it sound like the state was at a risk? I, I think it's too early to pass any judgment. I think government has arrested these people. They will bomb put them on trial at some point in time. Then more evidence will be, will be coming out and we'll be better informed as to what's, what's happening, you know. But I, I would want to reserve my comment until we get more information on that. I mean, they will put them, have to put them on trial and try them. And they will have to, you know, uh, charge them with some offenses and they will have to respond to it. Then we will be better informed. You know, but uh, like I said, I mean, could it start to solve what problem? I mean, the problem you have, it's true, you have many problems, you know, and the problem didn't start yesterday. It's been with us for a very long time. You know, and we have gone through years and years of could it start, starting with 1966, mm. the 4th February, with of Nkrumah, then there were other mini coups, you know, April 17 coup by the okay. SBI and the French Yabua, a coup, and there were many, many coups, some succeeding, some failing. But, Terrorist problems have not been resolved. They have been a mountain, you know, on the contrary, they a mountain. Mm -hmm. So I'm of the view that, and I've always formed that view, that you will not solve problems of this country through the military, the barrel of the gun. You can't do that. It, it won't work. So if you, you mean if anybody attempts a coup now, it won't work? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that, no, not that the coup will not succeed, but sort of the coup won't succeed. But also, you will not achieve the purpose. This is why we want to wait and, and hear them being tried. Hear the reason why they thought the government wasn't doing well. They would have to be overthrown. And I'm saying that overthrowing that government is not, a, it's not as easy as you think. You know, and I, I believe that some weapons were discovered, some grenades and whatnot. I don't know what they intended to do with, with the grenades mm. and attack somebody. I don't, I don't know what. You see, in, in the cool of 1966, right. there was one broadcasting station, Ghana Broadcasting. Right. So when you see the broadcasting station, you, you have virtually overthrown the government. Mm. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Now you have so many stations that if you throw a uh, GBC, you can go to TV3, you can go yeah. to any other FM, you can go to whatever, you know, all kinds of stations. So, 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 so it will be more difficult to be successful with the coup this time around than it used to before? Yes, it, it will be than it has been in the past. Mm. And also, what do you even take power? Ghana's problems are many and they are difficult. They get more complex. Mm. So you don't, you, you won't come and solve them. We've seen it through, through the through the past. Right. I, 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 what do you say? Nkuno was overthrown, um, but you know since Nkuno was overthrown, Ghana okay. hasn't gone any better. Mm. So I'm saying that if we overthrow a government through the barrel of the gun, you will immediately to succeed. It won't be. It will be easy for you it to solve Ghana's problems. So it's a waste, waste of everybody's time to try and overthrow a government that way. All right. Brigadier General Nunu Mensah, thank you so much for making time to speak with us. He's a, a former national security advisor uh, sharing his thoughts there. So let's come in studio and speak to uh, someone who's actually also a former BNI operative. And um, per the list that government gave, we were uh, told that the BNI intelligence unit was also uh, involved in the 15 months, is it, um, uh, assignment that has brought us where we are today. Uh, Richard Kumado is a fraud and security consultant and uh, would want to, first of all, start from the bit about it being a coup. From a security man's perspective, was it to put fear in the people or really there was a threat of a coup? How do you, what is your reading of it as a security person? Well, rather, it's unfortunate because you just spoke to Kojo, who happened to be the government spokesperson. Yeah. And the official position of government is that somebody wants to destabilize the state and therefore it's a coup d'etat. So if we go by what government is saying, then we can only comment based on what they are saying. Okay. When I saw the news at first, I was a little bit scared. Then reading it downwards, I realized that the, the dots were not adding up. Mm. But then we are talking about 
a whole year surveillance and now i've been doing surveillance all my life the government cannot put up a whole year surveillance into the public domain so we are assuming that government had more than what they, they put have out. put in out okay. there otherwise if this is the facts you're supposed to comment on then the critics who are saying that it mm. does not necessarily look like what warrants a coup d'etat they might be they right might be right okay the the language is uh, one of the things that many have also talked about the language in government statement you know attempted coup or a, a plot and then also to destabilize the country um with these wordings it, it, and, and again from the security perspective do you think that it could have been put out better so as not to create fear and panic because some people like you said you were scared when you also said i was shocked as well you know and i read further down and then i said okay we want further and better particulars on this but was it to put fear in us? I don't know, but if you want to destabilize the state, you don't need a gun at all. Uh, Look at the Northern Africa. The guy blew himself, he burned himself, and the yeah. state was over. Yeah. When you have external aggressors who want to recruit your people, or you have internally motivated saboteurs who want to destabilize the state, they don't need a gun at all. Mm. So therefore, to say you have gotten this number of weapons, and therefore it's a coup, that is the communication I think my brother Kojo need mm. to have polish it a little bit. Then again, you don't also need specific amount of weapons or specific types of guns to plot a coup anyway. Mm. And amount of the total number of soldiers you need to plot a coup, in one of the coups in Ghana is just about eight. And therefore, we, yes, we need to be careful about the space, who control the space. Once we jump the space and jump the airways and we create a neighboring environment, whatever you put in there will just sprank out the fire. And that is what we say. And the space you are referring to is which space? We are uh, talking about the communication space. Okay. And we are talking about the public space, okay. which we all dwell upon, because what people hear is what they respond to. Mm. And in our system, instead of responding, people tend more to be acting and reacting. Yeah. And that is the danger here. Because all governments all over the world, they face some level of threat. Right. Whether right. terrorism, cyber, drug, mm. small arms, mm. which has become a major issue in this country. Right. And therefore, governments must make resources available to the security agencies to be able to protect the state mm. and secure your territorial borders and sovereignty. Mm. Other than that, you have the threats to face. And anywhere in the world, that is what leadership is about. The concern, again, that uh, has, you know, uh, arisen out of a number of the conversations on this, one has to do with the fact that maybe something is not going right within the government setup or within the economy or within the country, for which reason someone would even plot to want to, you know, either destabilize the country or, you know, uh, you know uh, try a coup. In that regard, f do you think that economically there is reason justifiable enough for a coup? When it comes to the psychology of criminals, they have a desire and you don't have control over that one. Mm -hmm. They are only looking for a soft target. So therefore, you mustn't want to give them opportunity. Economically, and uh, all manner of things hit you as a state. And they come from all levels of places. People will want to uh, overthrow government for personal reasons or for uh, external agenda. And so therefore, as a state, you mustn't be pleading with the people because they wouldn't ask you for excuses or a reason why they would want you to leave power. Yeah. You just have to ensure that you recruit the right people, make the right resources available, train the right people, and let them secure the streets. The business community are ready to go. But by this information, you are destabilizing rather the business communication, uh -huh. creating fear in the public domain. There again, you are motivating people who want to take on the state to have the boldness to say that, can we try our luck? And mm. that is where communication was a problem. That is another point that I would want to make, which has to do with the recruitment of people to undertake this. We are told by government that some soldiers were complicit in this you know, att att attempted coup. And the latest information regarding that is those soldiers have been interdicted and uh, investigations have commenced. How easy is it to get soldiers who are supposed to serve the state and the government for that matter to be compromised 
Is it easy? Can no, you when it comes to coup, coup is a serious offense. It's a treasonable offense. The ramifications are huge. And so therefore, we understand that they are going to court. And therefore, the names they did not mention will definitely come out. Okay. They will have the due process. They will have legal representation. So therefore, the full fight will come out. Mm. But what criminals do, whether coup plotters or drug dealers or small arm dealers, they try to compromise you. Mm. And integrity and professionalism is what must be above personal gains and politics. Mm. And the lining factor of all this is politics. And therefore, we have to be careful the way we divide ourselves on political line. Once we are together, being it from the state point of view, because Mighty, you know what? When it comes to the security of the state, it's not the politicians. It's the constituent that form national security. Okay. And the decisions and the issues that come there must come with the lens of professionalism, objectivity, and non-partisan. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, the politicians want to do politics anyway. Mm. And whichever way you look at it, the NDC and MPP will play politics into this. Mm. We must rise up about party politics. Come together as people who have the state at heart, people in position of national security, to keep our state and our security safe in this country. And my final question would be the soldiers and the, those in barracks, those in the camps, do you think there will be some uneasiness in the camp? Definitely. The, the fact Definitely. that some of theirs are said to be part of some coup plot. Definitely. And we have to pray that what is coming out is true. Because if it is not true, or it doesn't look closer to what is true as a coup d'etat, then the reputation and integrity of the men and women in uniform will be questioned. And their commitment and dedication to serving this country and no political party will also be questioned. Mm. So therefore, I was thinking we could have managed it behind the scene because this is not the only surveillance operation BNR has been involved in. It's their daily bread. It's like uh, they food they drink. That is what they do all the time. And we could have handled it a little bit more instead of training to the public domain like we've done. This is going to divide us and it's going to create more. There again, it's better we also air uh, on the side of caution. caution. So therefore, we cannot say that government has rushed it or has not. But mm. we want to say that what holds us together is the constituent of national security. And they matter in this case, not the NDC and the NPP, because they will divide us no as politics. always. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with um, Richard Kumado. He's a fraud and security consultant uh, sharing his uh, position on this. Let's go to the phone lines now and uh, speak to Victor uh, Adaudu Kojoga. Kojoga Adaudu, I beg your pardon. He's lawyer for the one of the suspects who's been arrested following the news about the coup. Mr. Adaudu, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Uh, Adaudu. Good afternoon, if you can hear me. Good afternoon. Right, to start with, um, have you been able to reach your client and what are the charges that uh, have been leveled against him, if you know? Uh, I'm at the BNI premises, uh, the custody, and uh, my information that they are there, and they will be sending them to court. So I'm waiting patiently uh, to, for them to be taken to court, so I'll follow up. Have you been and able to have, no have you been able to speak to them? No, I have not been. They told me categorically that they were not going to grant me audience because they were sending them to court. So I can only speak to them when I get to court with them. Which I have also um had to accept and take it that way. So Okay. But before today, have you had any interaction with the with, with them? I had a brief uh, discussion uh, conference with them when they were to take their statement. Okay. Uh, that was yesterday in the evening. So I got there, they took their statement from them. And, and that was all. I couldn't have conference with them. So I'm sure once we get to court, um, I'll be able to have conference with them. Okay, but then did they tell you that, yes, they were, they were, you know, as the case is that they were plotting a coup, is that what they have they agreed that that was what they were planning and that the weapons were found in their homes? No, no, that's a laughable uh, matter. Uh, it's a laughable matter to say somebody wants to overthrow when, um, when you put all the scenario, everything together, and you see somebody wants to overthrow that me. I don't think uh, it is in place. What they have confirmed to me is that the security agencies were there, um, they went to the premises. 
and went to where the generator is located and brought us a sack, which has about four or five locally made pistols. You mean yeah, the so security agencies the went to where his generator is and came back with a yes. sack with weapons yes, in it? Yes, sack. Yes. And so, that, so they confirmed that it was found on the premises. But the, as to who put it there and as to who is the owner is a different matter. So they have no yeah, knowledge of it? No. No. And it, 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 it looks like it's a, all, it's a setup. Uh, if somebody comes there and says that even in the X-ray room, where there's an old X-ray machine, he said they are manufacturing guns in the X-ray. So these are things they confirm to me. But as to the rest, the list that is being bandied around from the statements of the government that they found all those. As we were taking the statement yesterday, there was nothing that was brought forth to say these are things that we found on your premises or we found in your house. And I always say, due diligence and the process tells you that even if people are arrested, what is found on them is used as evidence. And you are told that we are going to use A, B, C, D as evidence. Nothing was done. Mm. So we are just waiting for them. Are you suspecting and any foul play here? Hello? Are you suspecting any foul play here? Oh, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, what I, I may suspect is that um, is a dilatory that is it's when government is really under pressure from the ordinary uh, butter and bread issues from the citizens and the issues of corruption here and there. I think this attempt is dilatory to take off people's attention from those to give them something to feed on for some time. Mm. so that they don't remember all those. So it is done in political communication, and mm. I won't be surprised, and I'm not surprised at this. It will be done. It will continue to be done. So those are the things that the former... But why your suspects, though? Why, why these two gentlemen? Anything special about them? Do they have any military experience? Hello? Have they engaged in anything like this before? Why do you think they are the ones that have been selected? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, my final question is, why your, your client, why these two or three uh, persons, of what is of interest about them that the state would want to set them up? Like I, I think what I suspect is that um, uh, my client has a strong views, and he thinks that the way things are going in this country, both the political parties, whether NDC and NPP, he thinks that the politicians will not be able to fulfill the aspirations of the people. So people should be educated when it comes to issues so that they'll be able to question leadership. Right. They should be able to question leadership as to how things are going. And it's on a social platform where there's a lot of people involved in that social platform. I think, I suspect, that should be one of the things that maybe government is not comfortable with or mm. the, the people at the helm of affairs may not be comfortable with looking at the platform what okay. is discussed by citizens. So it might be a way to go around and see. So we are yet investigations is being done and we are yet to find what they have okay. so that we can all uh, come to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Um, um, Victor Kojoga Adaudu is the counsel for the suspects in that foiled coup plot, as government puts it, and uh, telling us that the case is actually being sent to court. He's at the premises of the BNI. Uh, further and better particulars will be made available on this. And stay with us. We'll certainly give you updates when they become available. This is still Midday Live on TV3.